We love having great advertisers support our show, but in order to continue doing that, we all need your help. So please go to podsurvey.com slash bite. That's spelled B-Y-T-E, podsurvey.com slash bite. Take a quick anonymous survey that will help us get to know you all a little better. That way we can show advertisers just how great our listeners are. We have continue to get sponsors on this show. And even if you're taking our show's podcast listener survey before, the current one is new. It's totally different. I'd love for you guys to take it all over again just so we can keep on locking it in and keep on doing the show for y'all. Plus, once you've completed the survey, you can enter to win a $100 Amazon gift card. So there you go, podsurvey.com slash bite. That's spelled B-Y-T-E. Thank you all for your help, and that's going to help us make our show pop. This is the Apple Bite Extra Crunchy. Let's get to it. All right. Thank you for calling in. Thank you for always watching and listening. This is the Apple Bite Extra Crunchy, episode 73 from an undisclosed location somewhere in California. I'm Brian Tong, your host, Stephen Beecham, my main man. He is still on a break. Uh, I'm here remotely, so we will get back on track as you're used to with our video and our audio together because, come on, two voices are better than one. But this is what we have here. It's me and you together in your car, at home, maybe on the toilet because I know some of y'all listen to it like that. Uh, Again, this show is all about you and not all about us. You can call us at 1-800-616-616. 2638, leave us your name, where you're from, and your comments, your messages. We will get our calls back up on track next week. But let's just get to the show. And I think the one thing to start off with, just kind of give you a little perspective, is today, this Friday, would have been Steve Jobs' 62nd birthday. We all know who Steve was, is. I mean, in my mind, I think that Apple, the company, Although it has changed, it still lives on in Steve's DNA and a lot of the amazing things that he helped push forward are still there. I mean, let's talk about, obviously, the iPhone, really one of his biggest legacies um, and Apple's biggest legacy. He was born on February 24th, 1955. He passed away on October 5th, 2011, obviously with a lengthy battle with cancer. Um, One of the greatest, you know, visionaries slash marketers slash minds in tech and when you always talk about simplifying things making them look amazing function amazing easy to use and obviously just change how we use technology today it's all about steve jobs and apple i mean if you want to even talk about some of his legacy products okay the macintosh in 1984 the macintosh that you that can't be understated how that changed the computer industry. Then we have the iPod. People don't talk about the iPod because guess what? The iPod is kind of dead now, but it completely changed how we consume music. There were plenty of MP3 players out there before. I mean, I still have my original iPod. It still works today. The original 4 gig iPod, it still works with iTunes it used a, a FireWire 400 connection. So I basically have this adapter that goes from FireWire 400 to FireWire 800 to Thunderbolt. And it still works with iTunes today. I That is crazy to me. Also, the biggest thing, the iPhone in 2007. And I think the timing of this was obviously meant to be on purpose. Apple announced this past week the official name of their spaceship UFO campus. They're going to call it Apple Park, and the new headquarters is in Cupertino. It's literally, I don't know, like 10 minutes away from where I was born and where I grew up in Cupertino, um, off of uh, Wolf, off of Wolf and near nearby Wolf and Lawrence on 280, if you know that North, Northern California area. Uh, for the longest time, it's been referred to as Apple Campus 2, but... It is now going to be called Apple Park. It also will have a 1,000-seat auditorium that will be named the Steve Jobs Theater. This is a 175-acre campus. It will be ready for employees um, to start occupying it in April. This is according to Apple. The process of moving more than 12,000 people into the mothership will take over six months, and then they'll continue construction of the buildings and parklands 
throughout the summer. Now, Apple began hiring staff for the campus back in November. And again, it's fitting that this announcement comes during the same week. And today, Friday, as of this recording, is the day that Steve Jobs would have turned 62 years old. So a happy birthday shout out to SJ. Uh, Just some of the things that make this uh, a structure, a building unlike other. It has a 2.8 million square foot main building entirely clad in the world's largest panels of curved glass. Like this is SJ's legacy here that we're talking about. 17 megawatts of rooftop solar. Apple Park will run one of the largest on-site solar energy installations in the world. It's also one of the world's, uh, the site of the world's largest naturally ventilated building. And it's projected to require no heating or no air conditioning for nine months of the year. So this is just, this, this is unlike any structure we've seen. And it looks amazing. You guys can all uh, see that and check out some of the pictures that Apple has posted. Uh, you can always see the drone footage that people are flying, have done over the campus um, to kind of showcase its construction. But there we go. We just wanted to shout out to SJ and give him, you know, just the credit that he deserves for building one of the most amazing companies. And his legacy lives in the iPhone. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about iPhone 8 or iPhone 7 S. Really, I think this is all kind of ramping up towards the iPhone 8, or at least let's talk about the premium OLED rumored 5.8-inch iPhone. Now, we talked about wireless charging last week. Apple joined, recently officially joined the Wireless Power Consortium. There's over 200 companies in there. They're, they support a single standard for wireless charging. It's called Qi, um, and everyone thought, oh, maybe Apple is going to jump on the jump on board and instead of this long range idea of wireless charging which Apple has put out patents for maybe they're going to go with Qi and just be able to just put it on a plate and some people aren't too stoked about that we have to also remember again the Apple Watch is a tweaked version of the Qi wireless charging standard it's not the official you know adopted protocol across the board that's why you can't use other charging pads with the Apple Watch you have to use Apple's charger. Of course you do. Uh, if they did something like this for the iPhone, we'd expect the same. But according to Reuters, five different groups, or at least five different groups, are working on wireless charging ahead of the iPhone 8. Now, they haven't necessarily settled on one yet, according to the report. They're still, according to people with knowledge of the matter, they're still looking at potentially doing this long-range wireless charging Patents had shown something like the iMac serving as a base for that, but we don't we don't know. The one thing we do know though is that the iPhone 8 production is expected to start relatively soon. So if they haven't nailed that down, and there have been no reports that have said, "Oh yeah, it's definitely coming," uh, you know, the long range wireless, you're probably going to expect to see some type of wireless charging. Drop it on a pad, but let's be honest: if you want to take this to the next level, you've doing long range wireless charging. Being able to have it charge while you're even just say like 10, 15 feet away from from the actual charging base in a room that has a clear line of sight. I'm not expecting it to go through walls, but if there was a way to put some sort of station and it, as long as it has a line of sight to charge it, let's 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 say 10 to 15 feet somewhere around there, that that would be something worth squawking about for sure. So we'll see how that shakes out, but again, uh, there's it's not it's not a done deal where that goes. Um in other in other news just surrounding the iPhone, whether this is the iPhone 7S or the iPhone 8, we don't know exactly, you know, which product, but according to Ming Chi Kuo, uh this dropped a little while ago, KGI Securities analyst has said that the iPhone 8 and this is in quotations will have a stacked logic board design that allows for a larger 2,700 milliampere hour L-shaped battery that would fit in a 4.7 inch form factor, right? So that is the smaller screen iPhone, which I would I would love. And the goal here would be to have the same battery power that people are currently getting out of the larger iPhone 7 Plus. Sorry, yeah, the iPhone 7 Plus with their with its 2,900 milliampere hour battery. You get about like what a little. 
about maybe an hour and a half or two with real world use, you get more juice. That That is what they're trying to bring based on this new logic board design and an L-shaped battery. Most of the time, the batteries are just a single rectangle, but that L is going to give you a little extra boost, a little extra juice. That is the rumor that the new design will support that, uh, which is which is nice. I think, though, look, if you want to talk about what is the phone with the best battery, what are we really looking for? Like, what battery life do we want? Just just go look around and go hunt for the Lenovo P2. All right, now, this is not a phone that everyone's going to buy right off the bat, but this guy has battery that basically will last you a solid two days. It has a 5,100 milliampere hour battery inside, okay? It has a battery saver mode, but two days of battery life without charging, I'm telling you, like, that is what we want to see, and I know why we get larger screens. These phones do so much more, but if someone could get me guaranteed even, not even, let's let's get a day and a half, I'd be impressed, but you give me two days of battery life, um, that that is that is what we're talking about. So right now, if the benchmark is the Lenovo P2 for the best battery life, I'm not gonna expect it to get all the way there. But get me get me at least through the next morning. That then we're talking, all right? So we'll see. But again, that is the rumor new design for the iPod iPhone 7 um, with its support. Now another thing is we've talked about how. Look, this might be a complete slate glass design, at least if we're talking about the iPhone Premium Edition. What is going to have to the, happen to the Touch ID button? Because most likely, if it's going to be a flat surface, kind of the dream that Johnny Ive always had, it's going to lose a button. So Apple Insider um, found a recent patent application that was published uh, just on Thursday that might give us an idea of where they're thinking with, you know, different biometric sensors. We've heard rumors of there'll be a 3D imaging sensor to potentially use your face to unlock your phone. We've obviously seen that in other products, uh, being able to face unlock your phone from Samsung. Uh, They do have acquisitions from PrimeSense. A long time ago, the company that built and made the Kinect camera for Microsoft, Apple acquired that company. So obviously they're going to be using some of their technology with depth sensors and 3D sensors. Again, this has not been confirmed that this is going to be the case, but a, ru- a, a patent report here fr- that has been uh, applied for by Apple focuses on acoustic imaging technology that might replace Touch ID in the future. So this is what this is. Uh, it's a filing for acoustic image sy- imaging system architecture. So this is what happens. They put down an array of acoustic transducers beneath the display. All right, and so what these do is these transducers, they generate acoustic waves, pretty much think of like pulses that move through the surface of the screen. Let's say you have your finger on the screen. And what it does is it then senses if there's any imperfections or things in the way. So uh, when an acoustic wave hits something, it's going to just be stopped, right? So think about the ridges of your finger, something that detailed. Uh, it can monitor reflections, attenuations, diffractions, and these acoustic waves basically now see that fingerprint or that finger on that screen. They know what it is, and that could be used as the next-gen version of the Touch ID sensor to completely remove the Touch ID button. That's That's the whole goal here, using sound waves and this acoustic imaging system that can lay, again, directly underneath the screen uh, as a fingerprint unlock. This is not something that has been confirmed to even be anywhere close to being implemented into any iPhone yet. This is just a patent application that Apple fi- filed for recently. Uh, but Apple Insider uncovered this, and it just shows you what they're thinking. And that always is kind of like a peak in the future. They may or may not do it, but again... It's just what Apple is thinking, and they're going to, if they do remove the Touch ID, they're going to have to come up with new biometric sensors or new ways to get us that responsiveness, to confirm our purchases, uh, to you know, to unlock our phones and, and lock our phones down as well. And let's be honest, keep our information private from everybody, and I mean everybody, every entity um, out there. Also, 
Apple addressing the iPhone 6S shutdown issues. I don't know how many of you have had this. I've heard it over and over a billion times. Uh, it, it happened to my phone, uh, specifically when I would be like driving, where around 30% your battery completely, completely just shuts down. Well, according to Apple, they have they feel that they have eliminated a majority of the iPhone 6S issues um, in iOS 10.2.1. This was a thing where probably for the past year, everyone was talking about it, but no one was addressing it. So Apple told uh, TechCrunch that after letting the fix simmer on customer devices, uh, the statistics show that it has improved the issue, citing an 80% reduction on iPhone 6S and 70% reduction on iPhone 6 devices for experiencing random shutdowns. Maybe an actual reason to update <laughs> your older phone. But there you go. That That is according um, to Apple. Here's the uh, official full statement. They made a, Apple made improvements to reduce occurrences of unexpected shutdowns that a smaller number of users were experiencing with their iPhones. iOS 10.2.1 already has over 50% of active iOS devices upgraded, and the diagnostic data we've received from upgraders shows that for this small percentage, percentage of users experiencing the issue, we're seeing a more than 80% reduction in iPhone success and over 70% reduction on iPhone 6 of devices unexpectedly shutting down. So there you go. That's the statement from Apple. Maybe you, you guys can chime into me, just like tweet me at Brian Tong, or just let me know if if indeed you have felt that this is this has been resolved. Um, in other news, the iPad, we know that Apple typically does a March kind of early spring announcement. All, st- all, all signs point to they still, but the latest report here from Digitime says that the 10.5 inch, this is kind of that new iPad that we're expecting to see with thin, thinner bezels on the side, a larger screen, but it, uh, sorry, a 10.5 inch screen, kind of the, the middle tier screen. The report is that the 10.5 inch and the 12.9 inch iPads that are expected to debut at a March event aren't expected to ship until May or June, according to supply chain sources. That would leave an entry level 9.7 inch iPad as the only one to ship within close proximity of the March event. So we know we, right now we have an iPad Pro 9.7 inch and an iPad Pro 12.9 inch, which is my favorite iPad of all time. Um, it, yes, is not the most featured, <laughs> most feature packed tablet compared to what is out there. And I will always admit that the Surface Pro better, Surface Pro 4 does so many more things, but Look, I'm an iPad guy from a standpoint of I love uh, – I'm in the ecosystem, but I just love reading comics and watching movies on the go. That's that's what I do during my free time on my commute. So um, I've always been the biggest – I've had the biggest boner for the iPad 12.9-inch. Uh, but Digitimes reports that based on the supply chain, uh, right now 12.9-inch iPad shipments have been really just drying up around the world and – Many retail checks, shipping estimates of two to three weeks in the U.S., Canada, Australia, France, Germany, and Japan. So even though we will get some type of announcement, if they still stick to their March event, we may not see the new iPads until later in the spring, um, more like mid-2017, according to these reports. Um, and kind of a just fun little follow-up story before we wrap up, we know the iPods all the controversy of the iPads. I'm sorry, iP- AirPods. Look at, I can't talk sometimes. My brain is filled with so much stuff. I can't talk. The AirPods. We know about the AirPods, right? I'm not wearing iPods. Air- I'm not wearing AirPods as we speak. I can't even do this right now. Colorware is now selling AirPods in 58 colors. If you've heard of Colorware, they're the ones that put this, you can buy directly from them. They will coat your actual products Make them look fancy, smanchy, nice and polished. This is not a sticker. This is literally a coating on them. If you want AirPods in 58 colors, you can pay $289 on AirPods through colorware. But you could get black. You could get purple. You could get red. You get turquoise. You get any color you want. You just got to drop the cash for $289. So I'm just saying, there's options out there and... Apple, they need to get on. They 
they need to get on. First of all, AirPods are still pretty much not in stock anywhere. It's like you go there, sometimes they get a few shipments, but for the most part, if you're trying to buy one online, it's what? About five? It's been about four or five months and you still can't just walk in a store and get AirPods off the shelf. That ain't gonna cut it, Apple. Like this is this was your best product for 2016. And it's it's hard to get, not because everyone wants them. I think a lot of people want them, but you didn't make enough. Like you just didn't make enough. So we will see. Again, AirPods, very good, very good. Very good. Not I'm not gonna say they are like gotta have, but they're really good. And if you're an Apple lover and you're in the ecosystem, you're gonna love them. But I I like to use different headphones for different things and I want once they get that full functionality, I'll be all on board. Once they get full functionality in the AirPods, you hear me, Apple, I will be all on board for them. So uh, we will wait for that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that's going to wrap it up for this week's Apple Byte Extra Crunchy. Again, call us 1-800-616-2638. That's the place to call. Leave your name, where you're from, your comments. We will get back into the flow. Me and Beach, Beach and Tong, will be back. So until then, be safe. Have a great time. Have a great week. And we'll see you guys next week. Peace!